Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God, who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to pour that love into our heart and write it on our mind and keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace. He wants us to have a ready mind, a clear mind, a sound mind the mind of Christ and that is developed in us he's given it to us free of charge he's taken all of our sin that he he cleanses us he washes us with his word he fills us with his spirit who reminds us of the word and he keeps our hearts and minds in perfect peace as we give him our heart give him our mind will and emotions as we give him everything we care about and we don't hide anything from him, and we give him all the glory and all the praise. The Lord is right here with you, in the midst of you, working all things out together for your good, for my good, for our good, so that we can walk like his children in this earth. Remember, we're just walking through this world. Hmm? We're not of the world anymore, we're walking through the world and we're walking through this world with the life that we have in Christ Jesus we're walking through because we've been given life with the Father forever we will be with the Son and with the Father forever there will be a new kingdom I mean there is a new kingdom already the kingdom of God you really can't say that it's new. It's always been. It's just that we have not known it. Hmm? And once we said yes to Jesus Christ, we stepped into the kingdom of God. We stepped into the kingdom of life, real life. We can walk in life and peace right now if we walk in the Spirit. If we walk with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you have rest for your soul. You have life and peace for real. Your mind's not all messed up with the situations around you, but you're the one bringing peace to the situation. Well, at least the peace is, is in you, and it can't be snatched away. That wholeness, that soundness, because you're in the Creator forever. You're with him, and he's with you, and he's not leaving. You can't, you can't kick him out. You can remove yourself, but you, you know, you can't kick him out. He loves you too much. And he's able to keep our heart and mind. I'm telling you, because we bring him everything, <laughs> all the mess, all the matter, all the cares. And he keeps our hearts and minds. Because, see, in, in Psalm, in what is it? No, Philippians chapter 4. It says, let your moderation be known to everybody. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through, through Jesus Christ. <laughs> he wants to give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And because we're walking through this place being thankful to God and having an understanding, <laughs> sometimes we don't understand the situations around us but all the more so to have every attitude and every avenue of our mind, will, and emotions present before God. We're always in this state of maturity where we know how to lay it all down. <laughs> Sometimes you need to know when to go to bed and not let the world overwhelm you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. <laughs> You know, I made a Walmart order yesterday for, you know, it's Christmas time. And I want my grandkids in California to have, you know, a certain present. 
and I, you know, it takes me a long time to do any type of shopping. I've got to do all this comparison stuff, and this might seem like a light thing compared to the heavy thing, heavier things in our lives. But I went through the process of the order. I put his address in and everything so that it wouldn't come to my house, but it would go straight to his. And um, they, after I put all the money in there and everything, did, did everything I needed to do, pushed the button to send. It said they accepted the order and they're processing the order. And then it comes back, we're canceling the order. And it'll take you seven to ten days to get your money back. <laughs> oh, my grandson's birthday is this weekend. <laughs> and then you got Christmas two weeks away. And I'm like, this, no, no, this isn't going to work. Well, it was getting later and later. And I was like, no, don't get yourself filled with anxiety over this one. Let it go. And trust the Lord to work it out. I did call Walmart.com and talk to them. They said they were working on it. And um, after that, what can you do? Are you going to be frazzled over this? Or are you going to trust God to work it out? Either way, that situation will work, will work out. And I had to just walk away, wash the dishes, and go to bed. We need to do that. Now, that might, again, that might seem like something small. But what does it take that we would walk away and not, you know, just let the Lord have that? Just say, okay, Father, if that's on you. I know you've got this. You're working it out for my good. No, did it feel that way at the time that I was walking through? No, I had to demand my soul to rest. I had to command myself, go to bed. Go, don't even look at your phone. Don't look at it to see if the money is back in your account. Don't bother yourself with it. Trust the Lord. Trust the, trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. He's got this. You know, I still don't know. I have not looked at my phone yet, and I'm not going to till I'm ready to. <laughs> but anyway. We we get set off by big things and little things, by the words of other people's people, <laughs> and by the situations that happen. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Lord is able to keep our heart and mind because we are an open book before him. He is open book. We've given ourselves to Jesus, and we're learning how to live through him. Jesus was calm. If he got upset about anything, it, like they said, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? He was weeping over their unbelief. He'd been with them all this long. He sat with them and ate dinner with them. They laughed, and they talked together. They walked together. They, they went to sleep, and they got up together. Listen, they saw the miracles that he did. And they still did not believe. They saw him walking on water. Hmm? They saw the miracle of the loaves and the bread. They were there. It hurt. <laughs> Jesus wept. So they say that's the shortest verse in the Bible. You think about that. I pray that the Lord Jesus will find faith in this earth when he comes. And we are the ones. We're not talking about the whole entire world out there. We're talking about us, me and you. Hmm? See, salvation is personal first before it becomes, you know, broadcast to everybody around me that, hey, I've been saved Oh, come follow Jesus before I start preaching the gospel to everybody else. That gospel has first meant me. And it's in my heart. And I've become a, a witness to uh, of, the, of Jesus Christ. A witness to the gospel. This good news that the Father has sent us a Savior who has redeemed us from, from 
eternal separation. We're no longer judged, but we've been made free. We don't even have to be slaves to sin anymore because of what Jesus has done to it for us. He's brought us into the kingdom of life. Nothing compares to the promise that he's given us. To true worship begins in our soul. We are taking this mind, will, and emotions, and we're bringing it before God to be washed and cleansed from the unholy, unrighteous deeds that it once lived in. The way that I think and the way that I process things in the world, I did it alone, so to speak. We, we think we did it alone. We had a lot of help from the adversary. The adversary that wants to take your soul with his, with him. He doesn't care nothing about us. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. Hmm? Life and life more abundantly. He is the shepherd, the, the bishop of our souls. He's the anchor to our souls. The Lord loves us so much. He's not willing for any of us to perish. But we have to understand that the Lord has sent his word into our hearts. He sent his spirit into our hearts. He sent his word into our hearts. He's written this word on our heart and on our mind. That's why we have to get the word in our face. We, we read this word, this Bible, to get an understanding, to get clarity. This word knows how to prepare you so that you're dressed. That's another thought I have. You know, I, I like this thought of being prepared for the wedding banquet, the banquet that we're all going to attend because we believe God. And don't lose, don't lose me here. It's just that, see, this word is the wedding dress. It's what washes you and cleanses your soul and makes it spotless. Jesus washes his bride with the word. This is what he washes us with. He cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. He already went to the cross and he only had to do it once. But did we come in and really believe what he said? Did we get personal with the Lord? The gospel starts with you. And it starts with me. I want us to have a clear mind, a ready mind, a sound mind the mind of Christ. But to have the mind of Christ means to submit to God. Learn the Holy Spirit's voice in you. Oh, oh, no, the, know God's ways. And it doesn't come from just reading a book. This comes because we know that God is. When we know that Jesus Christ is, what does it say in Hebrews chapter uh, 11 again? I'm turning there. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And there's a reward for us who Sincerely, desperately seek Him. We desire the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. We never want to let Him go. We want the Lord to be our life 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, and the leap year. See, greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. The Lord is the strength of our lives. So, why is this called? not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It occurs to me that because of our own personal relationship that we turn on and off with the Lord, that we become ashamed of the gospel before the face of others. That we're not shining as the lights that we should be. Probably going to botch this one up. I don't mean to. 
I just want us to come into this boldness and this to this courageousness but we can't do it until we become our in ourselves not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ we you know it's being bare before God and trusting him with your whole, whole heart with everything with your with, even with your breath even with your pain you come and you just say father here I am Lord Jesus <sighs> And just breathe. Take time to worship Him. Get an understanding and get clarity because you sit with Him and in and, and worship. You know, worshiping God is not just a song that we turn on and we turn off. It's walking with Him and talking to Him. It's leaning on Him. Enoch, same verse, chapter 5. I mean, Chapter 11, verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he, he was taken up to heaven, alive. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Then it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Faith pleases God. Believing that God is and that he sent his son to do this, our Savior. This is everything. Believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God who died and rose again and it really happened. What is the confession of our faith? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ starts within the walls of my heart. It starts with my mind. I'm laying this thing down so that the Lord, my God, the one who created the world and all that there is in it is glorified. It starts with me. It starts with me. How can I preach to others? And yet I'm, you know, just in unbelief. Jesus wept is a real verse. <laughs> Why did he weep? It was the unbelief. All that time that he spent with him. And you still don't know me. You still don't believe that I am. Now, it's time to get personal. It's time to sit down with the Lord and just say, here I am. Help me to come into this place, Lord God, and just sit down with you. Help my heart to be one with you. My mind to be one with you. Order my steps, Lord God, that you may be known in me and through me. Help me to come sit with you in everything that I do. Walk with me and talk with me. Help me to walk with you. Now this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face. Love God because he loves you. It's not him who ever moves. It's not him that walks away. It's not him that shuts the doors. It's us. Because at any moment that something happens or our mind wanders, we exclude him because we don't feel him. Well, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Which means talking to the Lord and saying, you know what, Father, I'm sorry. It, you know, for whatever the thought was, Asking him to help you with your feelings. Oh, praise God. I'll try to write out all the rest that's going through me right now. But I pray that the Lord just bring us to this place where we can truly reveal everything and just let everything go and roll all the care over onto the Lord so he can be the strength that he is for us. So he can be the, the help 
he said if we come to him <laughs> you know if we come into this throne room of grace he will there's mercy and there's grace to help us in our time of need hmm? he set a table before us in the presence of the enemy of that evil thought of that terrible feeling that makes you feel like you're alone but you're not alone you need to say that God is constant you are never alone remember this one not ashamed of the gospel it starts in my heart it starts in my mind and laying out my heart and my mind before the Lord is essential we are his children the offspring of Christ the heirs of God and we don't even get it most of the time but today's a day and whatever days we may have ahead that we need to be prepared because Jesus is coming he's coming very soon and it, he said in a moment in the blink of an eye so we need to be ready to meet the Lord in the air are you ready give him your heart give him your mind lay out that soul and let him strengthen you with strength in the inner man in the name of Jesus bye bye